What up, fifth grade artists? We are going to celebrate Black History Month and President's Day kind of all in one here uh, with a look into the life and work of Sojourner Truth and Abraham Lincoln. Um, down here is kind of a mini biography or like a little news article about them. Maybe I'll put that in the instructions. Here is a drawing done of Abe Lincoln and Sojourner Truth. We're going to learn more about their their life, their work, um, and what they stood for uh, as symbolic figures in history. So we're going to look at them uh, and also get some quotes from them as well. So I'm just inspired by both of their leadership and their symbolism uh, and their hard work throughout their life. So let's take a look. So the month of February is known as Black History Month, also has President's Day. And since these are two very important figures for those uh, celebrations, I think it's just logical to combine them. Um, we're going to use some vocabulario. Uh, we're going to take a few notes uh, in the uh, in the in your sketchbook notes. So that'll be in a different video. But um, you could also kind of fill it out as we go here because Sojourner Truth was an abolitionist and an abolitionist is anyone who was against slavery um, back in the United States during like prior to and during the Civil War. Um, so again, we're really connecting to social studies and history here. Um, but like I always say, art encompasses or combines all the different subject areas and classes uh, and use works together with those. So especially social studies and history, art can teach us so much about it. So an abolitionist means you're against slavery. She was also a women's rights activist and basically just a freedom fighter in general, uh, hoping that everyone would gain freedom and what a perfect thing to live by. And then Honest Abe Lincoln was a lawyer, politician, and uh, el Presidente Número 16, the 16th President of the U.S. Uh, so that's kind of his uh, life work there. We have some quotes from Sojourner Truth. Um, I know and do what is right. So that's something we could all live by, too. We know what is right. We're going to do what is right. Um, so kind of I keep that in the forefront of my mind at all times. Also, truth is powerful and it prevails. So at the end of the day, truth is going to win out. Truth is powerful. There are, there's power in the truth and in your words. And if you are speaking the truth and being honest, that is going to win at the end of the day. So fun fact, there's a statue of Sojourner Truth here in Michigan in the city of Battle Creek. Uh, and this is that statue there. And there are quotes and amazing uh, informational plaques about Sojourner Truth there in Battle Creek. And it's in Battle Creek, Michigan, because that's where she ended up living uh, the remainder of her life after her long fight for freedom and equality uh, and rights for slaves and women and all people. Um, so I have not seen it in person. I don't know how I haven't done this, but I kind of want to go on a road trip to Battle Creek to see this. And maybe you have been to Battle Creek and have seen this statue. And now you're going to know exactly who that is and what she stood for so tall, just like in the book that I read. Uh, and the link is in the instructions as well. Amazing book, amazing illustrations. I love it. All right. So there's some quotes from Sojourner Truth. You're going to pick one or both. We have some more uh, quotes from Abe Lincoln because um, he was a president. They did kind of use more of his quotes or wrote them down. Um, and I've chosen some for you to choose from, some that I liked. So whatever you are, be a good one. That's that first one up there. So whatever you choose to be in life, be the best that you can be. Give your personal best no matter what. What a great message that is uh, and kind of what I live by as well. Um, Leave nothing for tomorrow, which can be done today. So basically, if you have time to do something today, especially if it's something helpful or kind, uh, let's do it today instead of pushing it off to tomorrow because it's easy to push things off again and again and kind of procrastinate. But if you have time to do something today, especially if it's productive and helpful, uh, try to do that today. Um, 
Again, something I try to live by. Um, those who deny freedom to others deserve it not for themselves. What do you think that means? Hmm. Especially in terms of history, during this time period of slavery, what do you think that means? So pause and maybe think about that. Those who deny freedom to others deserve it not for themselves. Hmm. Do you think it could mean if you uh, are treating people so disrespectfully and uh, owning slaves and uh, treating them not even as human beings, would, would you deserve freedom yourself if you can't help others or see other people as needing freedom and equality? Hmm. Something to think about. Uh, here's a good one. Stand with anybody that stands right. Stand with him while he's right and part with him when he goes wrong. So kind of like choose who you're who you're with, who you're aligning yourself with. If if they're in the right, if they're in the positive side of things, you can stay with them. But if they start to stray and you know it's not right, maybe it's time to part ways. I like that quote, too. We cannot escape history. That's a great quote, too. You can't escape history. These things happen. There was slavery, but can we overcome it? Can we work toward a better tomorrow? Absolutely. And this especially was important during this time because we can't escape the fact that there was slavery, but now if we can free the slaves and give equality uh, and rights to all, that will not erase history, but it will make things better. Um, so place your or put your feet in the right place and stand firm kind of like sojourner truth message in the book uh stand firm stand tall for what you believe in and what you think is right so never give up uh fighting for what you believe in moral of the story love that all right what you need in your work of art so again here's that book that i read that i love so much uh you're going to include a portrait of Sojourner Truth, a portrait of Abe Lincoln. So portraits, pictures of people or animals, uh, you can use both. Um, quote from Sojourner Truth, you can pick one from the slideshow, go back, pause, do your thing. Quote from Abe Lincoln, you can pick one uh, as well. You don't have to just pick one, you can pick more than one. Uh, the American flag is incorporated somewhere in your work. Do you? Does that mean you have to have all 13 stripes and all 50 stars? No, it does not. Uh, if you have some stars and stripes in there, that is symbolic, a symbol of the American flag, the United States flag. Um, In-person learners, we're using multimedia, so we're using some tissue paper uh, somewhere in the work to add some cool texture. We're going to use lines for value and texture. Uh, we're using a dove, at least one dove, somewhere in the work, uh, because a dove is a symbol of peace and truth. Um, so in the notes, it says a dove is a symbol of peace and truth. So we're bringing peace. Truth prevails, just like the quotes we read. Uh, use a variety of size and shape and fonts. You don't want all your words to be teeny tiny and the same. You want some to be bold, some to stand out, some to be bigger, some to be bolder, um, and some fonts to be different too, because fonts can really uh, express emotions as well. Uh, so try to use that as best you can. When you're doing portraits of Sojourner Truth and Abe Lincoln, try your best to use facial proportions. So I have a video that we uh, did a demo on facial proportions. You can review that if you'd like. Um, keep it light till you get it right with pencil first. Then you can outline with Sharpie or other permanent marker. You can use some watercolor or temper cakes. Uh, you can use colored pencil once that paint is dry. And then, of course, you can collage on some scraps and tissue paper. Um, and then when everything's dry again, you can use more materials, maybe even oil pastels, crayons, uh, more marker um, to add more details, more values, more textures, uh, make the words stand out, all that good stuff. So back on February 1st of 2019 to honor um, the first day of Black History Month in that year, Google did my new fa or my favorite uh, Google Doodle of all time. It's honoring Sojourner Truth. Um, so Sojourner Truth is here as like that O in Google. So you can see the word Google. Um, I created this project before I saw this Google Doodle. Um, 
believe it or not. And look at these. What are these white birds flying in the background? Those are doves, a symbol of peace and truth. Uh, and then we have other freedom fighting females here. Cool font. I mean, it's actually like Google read my mind and created a Google doodle that I had to in include in the slideshow. So uh, Google, well done to you uh, using symbols and portraits and words and fonts to celebrate black history. Love it. Well done. Uh, so here's an example. First I did pencil. Uh, then I went over a Sharpie. I used lines to create value and texture. And then I added the quotes and the text, a variety of size and font. Um, again, yours does not have to look like mine at all. That's the beauty of this. There are requirements that we have to hit on the project, but you can express that in any way you'd like. You can choose different quotes. You can choose different portrait styles. You can choose different uh, fonts different ways to show the flag, different ways to do the background, different ways to use symbols um, and the flag and all that good stuff. So your composition does not have to be vertical like mine. It could be horizontal. Uh, so you're hitting the requirements, but expressing it in different ways with your personal choice. Um, then I use some glue and tissue paper uh, for that extra texture and collage. You can see it there in the image. Then I use some watercolor and temper cakes to paint over the composition. Um, and then once it's dry, maybe you lost some of your uh, words, you could go back in and touch those up, details and such. Um, and then my finished example, I added more Sharpie, some colored pencils. Uh, I added some more quotes, actually some more symbols. You can see I actually have some symmetry here as well. I wanted to do some symmetry and balance uh, balance is another great uh, principle of design. So I wanted two doves, one on each of their hands. So their hands come together in the middle because they work together to fight for freedom. Um, then they're lifting up a dove, one on each side, uh, and they're kind of facing out. So that's symmetry and balance. They're equal heights here because they stand up tall for what is right. Uh, and then I have the flag going, this is not how the flag actually looks, but uh, it is stars, it is stripes, and that's how I wanted to represent it. Um, again, it's your choice as well. So I want to show you some student examples. So your composition can be either horizontal or vertical. So this one was like in progress. Um, they just use one star. They have the stars and stripes up here. They have their portraits. And they're actually holding signs with their quotes. And look, they have some balance and symmetry as well with their two little doves and fireworks. Like, think 4th of July, freedom, symbols. Fireworks can be symbols too. Um, I like this one. It's another vertical um, composition. They're standing in the grass. The flag is behind them. There's a banner through the sky. And they each have a little dove on their head. Love it. And their initials. Uh, are in the sky as well. How cool. And then this one down here is a horizontal um, composition. Their fonts and quotes are visible. Uh, even some complementary colors in the outfit here. So good contrast. Love it. Here are some more student examples. Such good uh, creativity and different examples of how you can have the same requirements, but everyone reacts and expresses it in a different way. Uh, this one, we got portraits there flying on a giant dove. So flying for freedom. And look, they use tissue paper uh, and some painting techniques to create fireworks off to the side here. And that kind of represents the flag and the tail. Uh, I love this. It looks like a poster for freedom. This, they took one person and united it uh, with balance and symmetry. So half of the person is Sojourner Truth, half is Abe Lincoln. They work together. They fought together for the same uh, ideals and purpose. Love that. Uh, they kind of made a patchwork quilt in the background. I could go on and on, but I want you to maybe pause and look at the different um, examples here that different students had. I wish I had more examples because I just love it, and I know that you're going to come up with something excellent as well. So continue to pause, rewind, go back through this slideshow, through the notes in your sketchbook, uh, do some prep, 
in that sketchbook before you do your final copy so that you can understand where you want your quotes, where you want your portraits, where you want your flag. Um, so again, I'll kind of have what you need here. You could pause there if you need to, to see uh, what you need to include. Also, if you want to use some of the illustrations to inspire you, go back to the book link in the instructions where I read this awesome book and you could pause and maybe recreate some of the illustrations as well. It's just mm, prime time. So I know this video is long, but it is so important that we understand uh, the connection here with President's Day, Black History Month, history, social studies, and art. Uh, so keep up the good work, mis amigos. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Do the bomb.com. Adios. Good luck.